It's been a golden day for Ireland at the Paralympic Games in Tokyo and across these next two weeks we'll be bringing you the very latest from the Paralympics every day with thanks to Toyota. Hashtag start your impossible. You can find out more at toyota.a forward slash Paralympics and I'm delighted to say we're joined once in studio uh, yet again by Neve Talent from hersport.ie and we've got a gold medal to talk about Neve. What a day it's been for Ellen Keane. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely brilliant day for Ellen Keane claiming that gold medal. Um, she'd be thrilled. You know, she was on the podium in 2016 uh, getting bronze in the in the same event. Um, you know, in, in terms of going into the event, uh, Sophie Pasco was reclassified following surgery on her leg. She has nine Paralympic gold medals, which Ellen certainly would have been aware of, and she commented about being starstruck about, uh, about Sophie. Uh, in terms of the heat, it really looked like there is more to come from Sophie where Ellen was certainly pushing herself. Um, but then, you know, as, as things came into the final in the, the second 50 in, in the, the last half of the race, Ellen really pushed on and managed to send that gold medal, which was brilliant. Yeah, uh, John Kenny mentioned it in the commentary of the race itself that in the, the semi-final effectively that she'd struggled with her turn and to watch her power through that final 50 metres because she'd made the turn and you could see almost immediately the improvement that she had made to essentially nudge herself back in front of Pasco and have the race within her grasp then from that point on from about 40 metres onwards. Yeah, definitely in the last 25, uh, she, she really pushed on um, and, and put her under pressure. Um, you know, she obviously had that belief and, and she has commented about, you know, using the, the last year to, you know, really work on herself and, and her attitude and everything. And it's, it's really great to see it pay off. Um, she has also kind of talked about the, the difficulty of, of COVID and, and training. And you're talking about somebody who has, you know, been in a pool, you know, known swimming as a lot of her life um, you know for the past number of years and they were barely in the pool so it really is uh, great to see you know getting through all those kind of trials and tribulations and her you know being uh, you know at the, on top of the podium getting that gold medal yeah absolutely fantastic scenes with the with the medal ceremony and all of that um she's been a remarkable ambassador uh, not mm -hmm. only for swimming but also for paralympic sport over the course of her career so far and fingers crossed given her age profile there's obviously a lot more still to come uh, from her both uh, both in tokyo and beyond but uh, she has been and is a remarkable ambassador. We had her on the show on Monday. Mm -hmm. She was talking to Nicole Turner and it like th there's no sense if she feels pressure, I don't get the sense that it that it displays itself uh, really outwardly with Ellen. She seems to be a really relaxed, sanguine kind of laid back kind of character. Uh, you've kind of come across her before, I believe. Is is she like that in person? Is she like that in competition? Yeah, no, look, I think um, she's been in the limelight for so long. Like we've, you know, mentioned that she was 13 years old when she went to her first Paralympic Games uh, back in Beijing. So between herself and Nicole, they've been exposed to this for so long. And Ellen in particular really uses her profile to talk about things that are important to her. Uh, you know, she really is about body, body positivity and uh, she's met, um, you know, families and, and other, you know, children that are like her and, you know, really just does spread a positive message, which is which is really good. Um, yeah, a long time. It's it's been a long time watching her journey. Um, you know, from that thirteen year old girl to now somebody that's twenty six, and um, it's just it's just phenomenal. Um, you know, it's she would have been going as a thirteen year old, which is just so young and, and soaking up the environment. And now to see her at the top of the podium, and I do I think there's just so much more to come from her. Like I don't I don't think the journey is over yet. You know, we're talking about Pasco and the fact she has nine Paralympic medals. Um, so what can we see from Ellen Keane? Yeah, the, even to to get over that kind of starstruckness today mm. with, with with Pasco and to see somebody with that profile and that number of medals in their back pocket already, and to absorb that pressure and to get over a thing like she mentioned afterwards that when she jumped in the pool, that her her goggles filled with yeah. water. Like I've got three young lads. If that happens to them with their swimming lessons, they're getting out and they're heading straight for the changing rooms crying. She still had to go win an Olympic gold medal. That like that's that's dealing with pressure on a completely different scale. Yeah, absolutely. Like the to to overcome that is really difficult. And look, it's not something that is new to her. It's definitely happened before. She's been for, swimming for so long, but it's certainly something that can be unnerving. So, she did mention um, that she couldn't really see others, which kind of made her focus on her own race. Uh, she mentioned that she saw Sophie uh, on the turn and kind of knew where she was. And um, but it possibly allowed her to focus on that long and strong stroke that she was talking about. Like sometimes when she goes under pressure, she says that she can shorten her stroke and not use her strength. Uh, so 
I don't know, a blessing in disguise. I'm not, I'm not really sure. Um, but look, it's certainly all worked out for her and she has another event to come. Um, herself, her family, her coach, uh, Dave Malone, obviously they're all thrilled. Like her family are absolutely ecstatic. Um, her dad was on the, on the line earlier getting interviewed and um, he was just absolutely thrilled, which is completely understandable. But I think they're also finding it maybe a little bit difficult not to be there with her because, you know, they usually do travel with her. They're such uh, avid fans. They're always in their, in their Irish kit, really supporting her. Um, so it, it, it must be a different... Uh, experience for everybody but look we're obviously all just delighted that everything you know all these events can go ahead and that we can and um, you, you know see the athletes race and on the hard work to pay off because to be fair there was a time where we weren't sure if it was going to go ahead and in terms of Ellen like she hasn't had much racing in the past two years I know they've done things a little bit domestically and um, but it's just not the same and you know it's it's great to see that you know athletes are coming to the fore like we've had so many personal bests um, and, and, and good results like so many finalists from this Paralympic yeah. game so far already. You've got a bit of you know personal experience as regards <laughs> Ellen because uh, I believe that you've you know you've competed against her, yeah. uh, albeit not necessarily in the last twelve months or two years. But no, no, no. You have done before, right? Not in the last twelve months, anyways. <laughs> yeah, no, back in the day. So I've known Ellen since I'd say we were about eleven or twelve. So it, it really is like I think for everybody from the swimming community like would know who Ellen is, and there would be a, a cohort, I suppose, of people that are 25, 26, 27 years old that would remember Ellen from being around. And it's just you know it's great to see obviously uh, a young woman still in the sport, someone that's twenty six years old, because you know women do leave sport you know quite early. And just to see her um, realise her dream of, of, you know, that gold medal. So there's a lot of people within the swimming community that absolutely are uh, really proud of her and absolutely delighted for her. Um, and, and probably did race her at some point along the way. Um, but yeah, I'd say they're they're all thrilled. Is that just modesty saying you probably did race her along the way? Is it just <laughs> no. like it's the mists of time and so many people have been, been involved? In no, the yeah. Look, I like I remember hey, like there would have been kind of a gang of, a gang of girls, um, you know, back in the day, 12, 13, 14 years old, that you know would have got on, had good crack, and um, you know the the same people always racing each other and it's just it, it is great to see like her become such a great role model for you know women in sport um, and, and just anybody in sport really and just to achieve like she's achieving in the pool but she as, as we mentioned already she is like a really great role model she does talk about a lot of topics that are important to her um, and just spreads really positive messages so um, yeah look we look forward to seeing her in action again and uh, she'll be reunited with her beloved dog Danny soon which I know has come up in a, a lot of conversation recently has on, the dog features a lot on social media, yeah. particularly like for people who haven't followed Ellen so far on Instagram. I'd recommend that you do because she's she's brilliant. She not only gives you an insight into and has done over the course of the last couple of weeks the preparation that goes into mm -hmm. these Paralympic Games, and she had her pre, uh, I guess, training sessions and stuff like that. I think it was in Spain, and then off to to Tokyo. She went uh, just to get used to the weather, um, and then there's obviously the stuff on the dog. She's dealing with you <laughs> the know, dog has its own Instagram account. Well, that's, listen, well, we've got a dog at home that has its own Instagram account. As well that's not unusual but like she's just so brilliant in, in, mm -hmm. in tackling and bringing forward the stuff that people might be afraid to ask her about she yeah. welcomes questions um, she's really open about her situation mm -hmm. and she as mentioned at the top just a fantastic role model for Paralympic sport yeah absolutely uh, she, look she's been in on the scene for so long and I think she's a, a really good um, you know team player and she's just kind of sets the tone I think for the other athletes there like you know Roshi Nireen and Nicole Turner are there as well and absolutely look up to her and you know they're getting great results as well so it's it's just it's a it's a really strong team for the last number of years and, and I think Ellen is at the head of it. Um, as regards Roisin, um she had another good day cause, mm -hmm. because these things can't be uh, brushed over because uh, simply because we had the small matter of a gold medal today uh, but it was another fantastic morning and then afternoon for Roisin over in Tokyo. Yeah, absolutely. Um, she finished in uh, sixth place in the 100 metre back crawl. Um, she managed to get a personal best as well. So she swam 108, and she says it's been a time that she's been seeking to achieve for quite, uh, you know, for quite some time. So she's thrilled. It was a completely different uh, reaction than the final that she was in yesterday. She seemed really delighted. Uh, it was all smiles. Um, she had a, a really good turn and a strong push in the back half of the race. So she's two finals from two events. So uh, really good results for her. Um, on her Paralympic debut. Uh, we heard yesterday that, you know, the, yesterday's event wasn't necessarily her strongest mm -hmm. one. How many of the ones that she still has to go, because she does have a really full programme, uh, how many of those is she likely to, to final in again or at least progress from a, from a heat? Yeah, she's in action in the in the 400 metre freestyle soon. Um, that's tomorrow. And look, I, I think she is doing really, really well. She's coming up against some of the same competitors. I think she has, she'll, I think we'll definitely see her in at least one more final. Um, she's definitely pushing the boundaries. She's getting good results. Um, it might be a little bit difficult because 
was the the schedule is pretty jam packed. Like she's swimming six events overall, uh, which is obviously challenging. But uh, she's young, she's fit, she's been training hard, and the personal bests are coming hard and fast. So hopefully we'll see a few more PBs and uh, fingers crossed another final at least. Yeah, it's remarkable stuff for a 16 year old to routinely be making um, Paralympic finals on her debut. That's just that's that's beyond beyond. Um, but as regards the other end of the age scale, I want to mention Rosemary Gaffney as well today because. I went through the notes in this last night because I was doing up the bulletin for this morning for, for sport and you kind of just want a little line to see where somebody is from and mm -hmm. uh, all that kind of thing to mention oh they're from Kilkenny or oh they're from Cork <laughs> or whatever you don't expect to see uh, somebody at the age of 62 to be making their Paralympic debut but Rosemary is doing just that and the injury profile that she's had over the course of the last 14 years as well mm -hmm. is just something else so for her to even be in Tokyo uh, this morning was an remarkable achievement yeah no it's it's absolutely phenomenal um you know her paralympic debut at, at 62 years old um she was the reserve in 2012 and in 2016 so for her it's an absolute lifetime achievement to you know be on that paralympic team and and to be competing um yeah she's been riding since she was five years old she's been in horse sport all her life um in 2007 she had an accident and shattered her knee her tibia and her fibia uh, she started competing in para dressage two years later um, and then in 2014 had another bad fall and broke 40 of her bones um, which is it's amazing that she ever got back on a horse it's amazing to see her competing at 62 she obviously has some drive uh, to keep going and there is conversation like will she be pushing to to go for uh, Paris in 2024 it's just three years off and um, we know kind of in equestrian um, that, that people uh, can you know, typically have a, a longer career, we'll say. So, look, it's it's certainly not out of the question. Um, she'll be excited to have been competing. Um, she finished in 15th place uh, today. It was the, the top eight to progress to the final. But look for her, as we said, she'll be absolutely thrilled, um, you know, to be competing in, in Tokyo this time around. Uh, we also had, they're all stagers, I guess, at this stage, uh, Katie George and Levy and Eve McChrystal back in the velodrome mm -hmm. in the 1,000-metre 1, 1, uh, time trial today as well. How'd they get on? Yeah, they were in the 1000 meter time trial. They finished in sixth place. Um, they were uh, gold medalists in the in the Rio Paralympics in 2016 and then world champions in 2017. Uh, from their comments and reactions, they did seem really happy. They were just all smiles uh, in the interviews after. Um, but it seems that they've been more focused on road events uh, since Rio. They haven't medaled in uh, that event in the, in the time trial on the track uh, since 2017. And they did comment on the fact that there is no velodrome in Ireland um, and, you know a lot of the the track team is based in Spain and people have to travel and go on camps yeah. they spoke about the fact that they have done two camps uh, you know due to COVID which would be you know not very much in preparation for obviously such a, a, a big competition like the Paralympic Games and um, in in for like for context like Eve has children she has a job like it's very hard to just up and leave a country to to be training so and um, they seem to have been focused on the road racing endurance events and from their reaction they seem happy they got a personal best uh, and they called it a nerve settler so I think they'll be looking at the next events um over the next couple of days um you know in terms of in terms of podiums like look they've been on the podium before they know what it's all about and you can be sure that they will be aiming to uh, get themselves up there but it just seems like today was uh, you know, dust off the cobwebs, get back racing, and um, they just really seem to enjoy it, which is obviously great to see. Yeah, fantastic stuff. Uh, listen, Neve Talon uh, from hersport.e, thank you so much for coming in as well. We've got a packed day ahead tomorrow as well. Greta Strimakita is going to be on the track as well in the 1500 metres uh, tomorrow. She, of course, was fourth in Rio. Uh, Rachel, Rochelle Timothy is going to be back in action as well, and Roisin Irian in that packed schedule that we mentioned there. And our Olympic coverage is brought to you with thanks to Toyota. Hashtag Start Your Impossible. You can find out more at toyota.e forward slash Paralympics.